What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. So this week I have a brand new client who flew in from Florida to come visit me in LA to get her hair color done. So the before here you can see she's got quite a bit of natural gray which I think is absolutely beautiful and she has some old color that is on the mids and ends. Um, she seems to have a base color and then highlights added into her base color there so essentially her goal is to have something that will grow out a lot softer against her natural she doesn't like how her base color kind of grows out as a hard line against her natural gray so she's really looking for something that's going to grow out a lot softer and a lot more subtle So another thing I want to mention before I talk about the color is her hair is on the curlier side. She naturally has um, pretty wavy hair and she does wear it curly. So her haircut is cut in the way that she can wear it curly. Now what that means is when someone does a curly hair haircut, that means that they get their haircut done um, when it's curly. So this is her hair straightened um, and she plans to wear her hair curly but for the purpose of the color I guess she straightened it um, to make it a little bit easier on me and we are at the end we're not going to be cutting her hair so you will see that her haircut is not completely even straight because it's meant to be worn curly so normally for my clients if um, I was cutting her hair and she came to me and asked me what she should get i would normally say if you do wear it both ways like you have curly hair and you like to wear it straight and curly i would do a haircut that looks good straight um, but of course if you have curly hair and you normally wear your hair curly and you want the curls to look nice and styled then i would do the haircut on the curly side but sometimes when i do that i'll do both so sometimes I do have clients where they wear their hair curly mostly and they're wanting me to cut their hair. So what I'll do is I'll cut their hair dry um, when they come in and then I'll wash them and kind of make sure that the line is clean. Uh, meaning like I check the length and make sure all the lengths on the ends are nice and clean. But at least the layers that I put in her hair were cut when her hair was curly. Okay, so now talking about the color. So I'm basically going to be going in and doing my signature gray blending technique. So for this technique, I am going to detail her hairline there as you can see. And then I'm gonna continue just slicing her head. Um, for my lightener and products that I'm using, I am using the Blonde Wee Sports Cough Lightener. And I went ahead and mixed up a bowl of six and 20. Um, I did that one to two. So I do like one part powder to two parts developer just so it gives me um, slight thick consistency so that my foils don't slip but it's not too runny. Now when I do the foils around the hairline I do like to weave those um, because when she puts her hair up I do like those nice and blended a little bit but everything else after that I do just go ahead and slice her and I'm pretty much using the same formula for everything even though her roots and the mids and ends are different levels I figured because her hair texture it's a little bit on the finer side and I felt like her base color wasn't super dark so I know her virgin hair is going to lift nice and light and fast but the base color is always usually an issue but for her since her hair is a little bit on the finer side I am taking very thin sections um, and the base color is not super dark that's why I'm using just one formula but if she had maybe like a darker base color on the mids and ends 
I might use a different formula to hit those ends as I'm hitting her root in the same foil. And this part is really important to take really thin sections because you want to get the most even lift because our goal essentially is to get her to like a level 9 and 10 so that we can see those nice silver gray tones on her um, with the toner. So the spacing between my sections I would say are about a half inch. And this is on the thicker side because I do want to get rid of a lot of that color um, after I pretty much do the foiling part here I am going to tip out her ends to kind of brighten them and make them a little bit lighter because I really want to try and get rid of the old color as much as possible and just make her feel as even as possible as well too. I do explain in like consultations like this when it's their first time coming to me that it's a process for me to get them to the color that they want because of the placement and the technique that I use. So what I let them know is basically so what you see here I'm highlighting her hair but there's all the hair that's left out of the foils that I'm not really going to be touching that mid part. So I do let them know that they might see that part, that little bit of warmth in between these highlights. It's going to be minimal but it is going to still be there just in case they do see it and they're like, oh, why didn't you color this part? Or why am I seeing a little bit of warmth here? Just so that they know and they're prepared that they will still see a little bit of warmth after this first session. But of course, after they come in for the second session, that's where I pretty much pick out more of that warmth out. Um, but I can't do that right now because that would just make her hair completely solid if I just foiled everything. And then the other reason why I don't like to low light is because one, if I low light her hair, it's going to fade back to this or whatever warm shade because all color fades warm. And then two, if I do a low light that's too dark, then it makes it a little bit harder for me to lighten it later when I'm already going to be taking out that, um, lifting that color out the next session. So it just makes my life a little bit easier for the next time she comes in. So that's one of the reasons why um, I let them know that they're going to have that color still in their hair. And then also why I wouldn't low light um, for this type of technique. But yeah, I mean, I've used low lights before and they are pretty and sometimes they do last. But in the case that they don't and I'm going to have to lift them out anyways and they do fade warm, that's where sometimes you can run into trouble and issues with getting it out or just putting a little bit more stress on the hair. So I just personally, just as a preference, don't like to low light, especially with this type of color. Um, but of course, like if a client was wanting to do like more of a dimensional like blonde or brown or something, I would definitely low light. But since this client specifically wants to be grays and silvers, I don't like to low light because you want to put the least amount of stress on the hair as much as possible. And adding in a low light just adds more um, color into the hair and then later you're going to have to lift it out. So it just puts a lot more stress in my opinion if I did low light her outside of these foils. Okay, so you can see I'm pretty much taking that center section all the way up her head and as I get a little bit closer towards the top, I do go from half an inch to a little bit smaller than half an inch. And you can also see I'm really sectioning out the pieces that are already blonde. I don't want to overlap at all. Um, when I was completely done with her foils, she had no breakage at all. Um, and that is the most important part, especially because she has more curly hair and it is on the finer side. You just want to be extra gentle and um, cautious with her hair texture because it is a bit more fragile than hair that is coarser or um, maybe on the straighter side. So I am being a little bit more cautious with her hair and um, making sure that it don't really overlap onto those previous blonde ends. So now that I've reached about 
um, usually about like two inches from the hairline that's when I'll turn them over and I'll start doing their front money piece section so there I did a really nice baby light and the reason why I'm baby lighting is because essentially we want to do more blending than anything I really don't want her to have a harsh grow out I want everything to grow out really soft and the point of this color is so that when her roots grow in they she likes the grow out of it and the root her natural roots actually complement the color rather than make her feel like oh my god i need to get my hair done soon so that's my goal with this technique is to make her love the grow out of her natural grays because they are really beautiful and not everyone has beautiful salt and pepper gray hair and she should love them and embrace them because i love them and i feel like they are just beautiful natural highlights and when you have this type of color you can really go long in between um, root touch-ups so after i'm detailing the hairline i go back to my slicing pattern and just pretty much continue the same thing just making sure that i leave out the um, blonde ends and just picking those out and keeping my spacing pretty close together um, we want this to be pretty much a full transformation and the first session whenever I have a client like this I always do somewhat of a more closer to a solid application meaning there's a lot less dimension or her natural and then in the future once they have the color that they want and the goal um, that they're asking for then we can start even blending their roots a little bit more meaning we can add in more dimension and creating a softer grow out so that it's not so solid and light because she does have more of like dark of a salt and pepper look and essentially she does want it to really match her natural but because she has all this color on her mids and ends that I'm trying to get rid of that's why I did more of a heavy highlight today but in the future once we get her to her for sure goal and she loves her hair color i'm gonna start blending her roots to be even softer so they look even more identical to her natural gray okay so for the connection of the front and the back so i did a baby light again on the side hairline there and then i did a slice and then to connect the front and back, I did do another baby light right above the ear. And then after that, I'm going to continue in doing my slices. And again, the reason why I'm weaving around the hairline is so that if she puts her hair up um, at all, it does give her a very soft look um, and blend, opposed to like if I were to slice her whole hairline, then it would just look really solid and kind of look stark again, like how the old color was. So I'm really trying to create something that is going to look really soft and just intentional throughout um, the whole head. So after I do both sides, I pretty much do one side and then flip her over and do the exact same placement on the other side. And then after I've finished pretty much doing all the roots and mids, I'm going to go in and all the hair that is outside of the foil right now, I'm going to tip out, meaning I'm going to brighten them with some lightener. Um, for this one, I just went ahead and used Blonde Me in 20 and I'm actively trying to pick out the darker parts of her hair and kind of tease and lighten and balayage up um, when I do tip outs too I typically do um, like to hold my foils up a little bit like I like to elevate it a bit so that when you drop it the line of demarcation is a lot softer so the more higher elevation the softer um, the line will be from where you're blending up with your lightener so you can see I've kind of lifted and like feathering up a little bit opposed to like holding the foil all the way down at natural fall. Okay, so this is what her hair looked like once her foils were ready. Um, and there I am just checking out the tip outs and just kind of pulling them out. And honestly, her hair felt great. I did put her under the dryer for a little bit. Um, she was really under just like medium to low heat. I really don't like to um, put the dryer on too high just to kind of mimic body heat because that body heat does travel 
like maybe like an inch from the scalp um, with foils it can travel a little maybe just a couple inches but anything on the tips and the ends it does um, process a little bit slower so that's why I like to pop it in the dryer so that it starts to tone a little bit evenly and then after that we did a little pre-tone with some purple shampoo I like to leave this on for about like 5-10 minutes and then rinse with cold water so that she is ready for her toner so now my assistant and I are going in and beginning to tone her so we are going in and we're going to be using the rapid toners I always like to primarily use a mixture of silver violet and moonstone and I do like to change the ratio on that depending on the um, texture of the hair and density of the hair and also what level they're lifted to um, so typically the way that I apply the toners is I will root them and then here I'm pretty much just rooting her with the rapid toner first and then once that starts to tone on that root and mid area I did go back in and add some root shade and I used a demi permanent color I used a 6-1 which is a level 6 ash just to kind of blur out the lines of the blonde highlights that we did since we did slices I for sure wanted to do a shadow root that would blur out that line of demarcation a bit and the toner part is pretty much visual for me I just kind of check it and once I see that it, I feel that it's ready that's when I rinse it off um, but the application, I'll usually do a root, then do the mid, brush that out, and then apply on the very ends last. And I'd like, I just always normally do toners like that because I feel like um, the longer the toner sits on, the darker and deeper and more vibrant it gets. So it just kind of creates a beautiful gradient when you do it in sections like that, opposed to just putting the toner completely on from root to ends um, with each section and then on top of that I usually will do the hairline last because those hairs are typically finer and they tone extremely fast compared to the back so I always do that part last and then um, tone everything all together and then just smush all the color together once it's all applied alrighty guys so here is the finished look my client was absolutely so in love with her hair um, it made me actually very happy to see her reaction. I was super flattered and honestly, it was just such a honor to do her hair because she flew all the way from Florida. She had flown in the night before and she was flying out the next morning. So I'm just super thankful that she trusted me to do her hair and that she was just so happy with the way that it turned out. And it really made me feel super good about um, the color and I sent her home with some Barcelona purple shampoo to help maintain this tone and Honestly, I feel like this is gonna grow out really soft and beautiful on her. I'm not really sure when I'll see her next time but um, Regardless if it's sooner or later, I feel like it's going to fade out really pretty on her. Alrighty guys, that is it for this week's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in. And as always, I will talk to you guys next week.